Want a golf course looking long without physically having to get out and mow daily? Well, today we're gonna to be unboxing and reviewing the AI Robot Real Mower by Oasa. This is a paid sponsor review so I can show you the capabilities of the R1. I'll post the link of the product in the description you of the video. You shall not pass. Now, before we dive right into this information, let me make it very clear that Oasa is giving us a sneak preview of the R1. And I've had this machine for about two weeks running it nonstop throughout the day. And the machine I have, it's pre-launch. So it's subject to change here and there before it's official launch and shipping date. The early bird prices are starting at $1,199. And considering that I've paid well over $2,000 for my motorized reel mowers, this seems like a pretty good deal. If you're not familiar with the R1 or just robotic mowers in general, it's a battery powered perimeter wire free AI robotic lawn mower that sets its own boundaries in your lawn, mows the grass like a traditional lawn mower would when it runs out of battery or completes the mowing, guides itself back to the charging station, recharges, then it goes back out to finish any work it didn't complete, or it simply waits until the next day to do the task again. So let's dive right in on what makes this machine so different than all the other AI robot mowers on the market. The R1 is the first AI robot mower that has an actual 13 inch wide reel, R-E-E-L blade. Most AI robot mowers come equipped with uh, razor blade, rotary style mow blades, similar to what you're gonna find where you shave your face. They need to be changed out about every four to six weeks. Real mower cutting decks are what you're gonna find on golf course mowers and old school push mowers. Real mowers are widely known for their cut quality, which is why you're gonna see them on golf courses. Now, a traditional rotary mower that you're gonna find in most people's houses, they act more like a vacuum. They suck the grass up and then they chop the head of the grass off just like a machete. The real mowers are very different. Basically, it has a reel and it has a bed knife. That reel is going to move up and over the bed knife and it cuts grass like scissors to paper. The benefit to using a real mower blade is number one, the cut quality is far superior. It gives less stress on the grass. It's a cleaner cut. Second of all, maintenance is lower. And with the R1, the reel only needs one major sharpening every three years and what we would call maintenance sharpening. It's basically called backlapping where it uh, spins the blade in reverse. It needs that a time or two per season just to keep the blade super sharp. It's capable of mowing an area of up to 16,000 square feet or lot sizes up to about 0.37 of an acre. It's capable of mowing up to about 6,000 square feet comfortably per day. It runs for about two hours on a single battery charge and takes four hours to charge via the wireless charging pads that are built into the front of the mower. It has a 13 inch wide cutting deck it's capable of mow heights that range from 0.8 of an inch on up to four inches tall. It can handle slopes up to 24 degrees. It comes equipped with an active rain sensor, includes safety features such as obstacle avoidance and emergency stop button that's very conveniently built into its handle. Now here's the best part. The navigation guidance system that's built into the R1, it's antenna free. So the R1 comes equipped with two built-in LiDAR sensors, similar to what you're gonna find in the robot vacuum technology industry, which from my experience means setup is gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy. This comes as a complete kit. This is all you get. There's no antenna to deal with. It's literally just the garage and the mower, which makes the setup incredibly easy. All we need to do is to put the garage in a clear open area. Now, as far as setup goes, the machine's marketed to set itself up. It has an official set of process where it maps the yard, it hugs the boundary of the lawn. And if you're not familiar with LIDAR, it stands for light detection and raging. In LIDAR, laser light is sent from the transmitters and is reflected off the objects into the yard. The reflected light is detected by the system's receiver and it's used to develop a 3D distance map of everything in the yard. Other than the LIDAR, the R1 also includes a binocular camera system that helps better identify potential obstacles and boundary issues within your lawn area. Now the combination of the LiDAR and the binocular camera, it's a first in the industry to my knowledge, but enough yapping, let's start the mowing.
Now I found the autonomous setup work fantastic. I, I was also surprised to see they have a built-in feature, allowed me to program the boundary along my driveway so the mower would overlap onto the grass by about 50% onto the concrete, uh, which in the end, the reason why this is exciting is because it minimizes the amount of grass I'm gonna have to weed whack in the future. If you've had experience with using a real mower, you understand that calibrating the blade from left to right using a paper uh, cut test is mandatory to be sure that you're getting the best quality cut every single mower. To minimize the manual maintenance real mowers need, the R1 has a built-in microphone that's listening to the reel hitting the bed knife all the way across. Then it makes adjustments on the fly to ensure that the mower is always cutting clean and is properly aligned from left to right. Now this helps extend the life of the reel and takes away the hassle of constantly having to calibrate a real mower. Now as far as the application goes, the app most settings of the pre-launch version, they're, they're a bit limited. I have the option to cut between 0.8 inches on up to three inches for now. I can set up multiple zones, I can set up no-go zones, and I can adjust the height of cut from the app on demand. Between now and the launch, it's committed to changing that height of cut to range between 0.8 of an inch on up to four inches height of cut. Now, I prefer my rye and bluegrass between three quarters of an inch and 1.25 inches tall. Now, as a general thumb for most grass types, the more you mow, the lower you can maintain the lawn. But for those of you that want longer grass, you'll be able to cut all the way up to four inches. Now, just keep in mind, the R1, it's a mulching mower, meaning we're not bagging. Just to be clear, this type of mower, it's not a brush clearing mower. It's not designed to take a foot, six inches, or even an inch off of the top. It's meant to take a half inch or less off the top. So you need to do a pre-mow and get the grass down to the height of cut that you want beforehand. Now I'm gonna be mowing daily, but no matter what height that you wanna keep your grass at, it's recommended to mow five to seven days a week. Now, as far as the mow patterns go that I actually have access to right now, you have contour parallel, traditional mow stripes, and my favorite, which is the checkerboard, to mows over the same area twice in one session. One pass horizontal, one pass vertical. Now, the mower does automatically change mow directions after each cut, which I'm a huge fan of. It avoids rutting. And as of today, the mower runs its routes and not every pass has been perfect. What a lot of you guys are gonna identify in the cut is we've got a few wavy lines here and there. Every single update that I've been receiving, it's been getting better and better and better. Now, as far as cut quality goes, it's been fantastic. Considering it's only been two weeks and I haven't done anything special, no fertilizers, no irons, no nothing to crank this lawn up. The only difference is, is that real mower cuts clean like scissors. There's limited blade scarring and what has happened is, is it's cleaned up the past mows from when I started. It's hard to beat the cut quality of a real mower. As far as the future goes, it's committed to updating the software significantly before it gets shipped and launched to you in November. What I've been told, they've got 36 engineers actively working on the software every single day. Software will include anti-theft monitoring. It's gonna be complete with sirens and app notifications, as well as a lot more options to give you better control over the mow patterns, mow directions, boundary overlaps, etc. Given this is a pre-launch product, the obstacle avoidance, I've been pleasantly surprised with it. It's absolutely handled my uh, trampoline in the backyard better than most and it's only gotten stuck one time in the last two weeks, which some of these posts that I have are basically two inches tall, which most mowers have a hard time with. It does a good job for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've noticed the binocular camera system really hones in on it very quickly. It'll stop itself short, it maps it out, and then it gets really close to the post. Another thing to mention is that the front bumper is very well designed and it's lower to the ground. So that means that it has a greater tendency at hitting obstacles that are lower to cause the bump sensor to go off to avoid obstacles. So let's talk about the potential upsides and the potential downsides of owning this particular AI robot mower. Now here are the potential downsides. The LiDAR limits the mapping radius to about 16,000 square feet or 0.37 of an acre lot, which means this mower is specifically made for small to mid-sized lawns. Now, due to the lack of GPS, the LiDAR binocular system is also not made to mow at night, which limits the amount of grass that you can mow down to about 6,000 square feet. Per but the other downside is this, we wanna protect the reel as much as possible. So for those of you who are mowing below one and a half inches, 
you need to make sure that you get any sort of debris off of the lawn, uh, especially when it comes to any sort of gravel or any sort of rocks. It will absolutely decimate a real mower. But if you're planning on mowing higher between that two inches and four inch, you're most likely not gonna have any issues and that reel is gonna be much higher off of the ground. Now here are the upsides. The LiDAR is super accurate. It gives the mower 3D vision, almost as if we were seeing things. It sees everything. <laughs> Combined with the binocular cameras, I would expect the perimeter cutting and the obstacle avoidance to be ahead of the game by the time they're done launching this thing. And it's already doing very well. Now the 13 inch reel mower spans the majority of the width of the robot, which means that cutting edge against the lawn and the walls can get extremely close. We're talking 1.2 inches to the wall, which minimizes your weekly maintenance of having to weed whack those areas. I'll say the pre-launch version I've been using hugs the perimeter better than most robots I've used up to now, and it gets to about two to four inches on those areas on average. But my favorite thing is that hover mode where I can put it 50% over the grass onto the concrete because it's really minimized all the visible edging that I've had to do. But I will say that my favorite feature has got to be the auto mapping. Having handled a ton of these robot mowers, every now and again, due to an update failure, some miscellaneous issues, I've had to remap. And the machine does this process faster than I ever could with any of the other robots or even if I put this one in manual and try to do it myself. Now, here's a few things I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping for in the future. I'd like to see a built-in roller for lawn stripes. Now, rumor has it they're developing one, but I'd like to also see a program that allows for choosing stripe directions and patterns. Now, what I could tell you is hardware's been performing as they said it would. Cut quality's been fantastic. The obstacle avoidance has been really good. And I'm still really geeking over the fact that I have a autonomous real mower. Now, as I said before, guys, I'm gonna provide a link in the description of the video. So if you guys want more information, you wanna sign up for that Kickstarter, check the description of the video now. Well, how do you like them apples? The day that we're finishing up this video on the beta version, look at what just came by. This, is, believe it or not, is the second generation real mower. And uh, that should give us some pretty good content and some good update here in the near future. But in the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, as per the usual, hit me up down in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, the pest and lawn, Ginger, we're slaying lawns.